a window to spanking S2. As it happened, Jennifer's younger sister walked right up to James and me watching the spanking with big smiles on our faces. Little sister yelled. We stood there, shocked by being caught. She yelled our names and we ran. However, with the awful knowledge that we had been caught. Named. Made us realize we were now in for it as sure as the sun comes up. Why hadn't we left when we'd had the chance? We just couldn't stop looking at our friend as she got her spanking. I was almost sure I would suffer the same fate unless I could convince my mother that it was all an accident. We just happened to be there and heard a commotion and looked for just a minute before we were caught. When I got home my worst fears were realized. Mrs. J was talking to my mother as I walked in the door. Mrs. J and my mother were good neighbors and spoke often. My mother, as I've said before, was a gentle Victorian lady who always spoke softly. I could tell that she was more upset and angry than I had ever seen her in my life. It had always been my father who spanked or switched me when I committed some punishable act. I knew from the look in her eyes that this was one of those times that she was going to take care of me and my bottom was in serious trouble. I had no idea how serious at this point. However, I would soon to find out. The conversation between the two mothers went on for some time. My future fate was being determined by these very irate ladies. They were intent on teaching me a lesson I would never forget. I might as well adhere that I have never forgotten this lesson. When they hung up, my mother called me to her. She calmly told me she was greatly disappointed in my actions. She went on to inform me that we were going to remedy them, now. She said that since I had watched Jennifer get a spanking, I would suffer the same fate. What? My mother did not make sense. I knew I'd be spanked, but what did she mean the same fate? She told me she wouldn't tell my father right away, but later, in her own way. Now I was sure something quite different was about to take place. Mother said I would be severely punished so that I would never again invade another person's privacy by ever thinking of doing such a thing again. My punishment would be twofold. Firstly, she would spank me with her hairbrush. She said I'd find out the second part when the first part was over. I hadn't been spanked with the hairbrush for two years. I knew I deserved a good spanking and even admitted as much to my mother. I tried to say that I was sorry and felt very bad realizing that I was wrong but her only response was to say that I would soon feel much worse. She told me to get her hairbrush and then the wooden spoon from the kitchen. Mother had never been so deliberate in any punishment. I felt sick, and with good cause. Upon entering the bedroom she moved her dressing table chair to the center of the room and called me to her. I was told to bend myself over her lap. I remember being very scared as I did as she instructed. She began the spanking immediately. This was done with very deliberate smacks with the wooden spoon. She put her arm into it and it wasn't long before I was howling and pleading with mother. Please stop, it really hurts. I'll never do it again. Her only reply was that I should have thought of that before, and now I must pay the price for my deeds if I was to grow up a good man. After spanking me for what seemed hours, she stopped and forced me to stand. She pulled me back over her lap. Now the hairbrush was used to deliver scalding swats to my rear. My cheeks felt like they were on fire. It was as if an angry nest of hornets were stinging me. I was crying buckets of tears by now and promising to be a good man and never to spy on anyone being spanked again. I had never been spanked this hard. Even by my dad. With this I gained a new respect for what an angry mother can do with a hairbrush and a wooden spoon. When the spanking finally stopped I cried for some time as I lay over that maternal knee until she told me to get up. I do recall feeling better because I knew that after this I would be forgiven by my mother. Well, I was partly correct mother did forgive me, but the punishment was not over. I was completely shocked to hear that I was due for more spanking if it was required to satisfy Mrs. J. I just couldn't believe it. However, I was to go with my mother immediately to Jennifer's house and be spanked by her mother.
This spanking would be carried out in whatever manner Mrs. J. decreed. According to my mother, Jennifer could watch me receive my punishment. Just as I had watched her get spanked. My dear Victorian mother also told me that she had suggested to Mrs. J that I be given the same dose she had given to her daughter. Though she added I deserved harder and longer. I was so upset, bewildered, and fearful, I could not even talk. I knew I had earned the punishment. However, I still had a difficult time accepting that my mother would turn me over to someone else's lap for a spanking. Mother said she knew I deserved what I was going to get even if it was embarrassing. However, it was only fair for Jennifer to see me get my comeuppance. Mother and I went directly to Jennifer's house. I was ushered to the very room where I had observed Jennifer get spanked. Only this time it was my turn. Mrs. J was waiting for me and asked that I put the chair in the centre of the room so the others could watch. I obeyed. Head hanging low, for I didn't have any real choice in the matter. Mrs. J called her daughter to come into the room and watch the spanking with my mother. I was ordered to come and stand beside Mrs. J. I received a scolding lecture on my awful behaviour, and how shamed I should feel. I just wanted it to be over. I was so embarrassed and wanted to hide. I knew it was going to hurt like red-hot irons on my already sore bottom. I trembled when I saw that Mrs. J had her hairbrush and strap laying within easy reach. She took my arm firmly and guided me down over her lap. I saw her reach for the hairbrush out of the corner of my eye and knew it was being raised over my backside. Smack. Mrs. J brought that horrid brush down with all the force she could muster. Mrs. J spanked me hard and fast. Then hard and slow. One spot several times. Then another until my cries became hoarse and my kicking legs grew stiff. Bottom not red. But white from the force of the blows. I cried and screamed alternately until my own ears echoed with the sounds of my distress as it bounced off the cellar walls. I didn't care who was watching. This went on and on, never ending but in actuality probably only lasted eight or ten minutes. Her spanking was far worse than my mother's and I was one well-spanked young man but I still had one more trial to endure. A strapping over the back of the chair. I was ordered to stand, turn around, bend and grab the seat of the chair. I was to receive that strapping on my already tortured bottom and upper thighs. I groaned, embarrassed in a very uncomfortable position and the knowledge that I was on full display in front of the others. Then the strapping began. It was a totally new kind of hurt and pain, but it wasn't so bad anymore. I didn't care if it went on and on. After several strokes of the strap, the feeling sensations changed and I was again crying and pleading like a small child for my punishment to come to an end. After 25 or 30 strokes with the strap, my afternoon of spanking finally came to an end. I had to apologize to Jennifer. She was told not to talk about my punishment to anyone else, on a promise of further painful spankings herself. The mothers agreed that justice had been served. Liz told me later she was sorry I had suffered so much, but that I should not have tried to watch her spanking in the first place. I had to agree with her. Even though we were not to talk about it to others. We talked among ourselves about the events that had taken place, that day.